Good morning. Today I'm going to talk to you about uploading and or recording to YouTube using your webcam. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you might be asking is why would I need to know how to do this? Well, as an online instructor for Southern Nazarene University, we encourage all of our instructors, whether they're the course designer or the adjunct instructor, to create what we call weekly transition videos. So this would be a time when you as the instructor would simply talk about what you've covered the previous week and how that connects to and what you're going to cover for the next week. That could be a screencast where you show Moodle or it could be just your face and you talking to students. So think of this as like the first day of class for each week in a face-to-face -face class or when you're starting a new topic. What are the things that we're going to cover this week? What are the things that we covered last week and how do those connect? So that's our purpose with recording YouTube videos. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'll need to do is, is go to YouTube. And the easiest way to do that is when you're logged into your SNU email, you select the More menu and select YouTube. Or the other thing that you can do is go directly to YouTube, click Sign In, and then log in with your SNU credentials, being sure to include the at mail.snu.edu at the end of your username. So in the email box, you would put your entire email address and use your SNU Active Directory password. Once you've logged into YouTube, look at the top for the upload button and this is going to be visible on pretty much every page on YouTube you'll have the upload button so click the upload button and what I'm gonna do is talk to you about uploading and then I'll talk about recording and then uh, after that those two are going to look exactly the same so whether you're uploading a file or whether you're recording from your webcam they're actually both going to be uploaded so those will look the same so to upload a video you can click this blue air or sorry the silver arrow here in the center and that will open up like a finder window where you select a file and you upload it or you can simply drag and drop onto the window into this part of the window and you can upload that way. This little drop down right here for the video that you're uploading you can go ahead and select the privacy option and I'll talk a little bit more about privacy later um, about the three different types of privacy. So that's how you upload a video. Now if you're going to record using your webcam this is super easy so you just click record on the right side and you may see a window like this where it's asking you for your Adobe Flash Player settings uh, you may or may not actually see this window uh, but I always leave everything checked you have some tabs here at the bottom where you can choose what your input audio is you can change the volume, you can click for reduce echo, and then also if you have multiple cameras on your computer you can select which camera you would like to use. And then once you click close you will most definitely get this almost every time. Now you may have some privacy settings set up within your computer that may not ask you this but you always want to allow if you don't allow this you're not going to be able to record so basically YouTube is asking can I use your camera and your microphone so once you click that you'll then see your cameras live web feed and notice where the red arrow is you'll also see this meter on the other side that's actually your audio 
So this is a screenshot, so you can't see that, that green part of the meter moving up and down. But when you're looking at this screen on your computer, if it's recording your microphone or if it's hearing your microphone, you'll see that green meter moving up and down. And you want that to be kind of in the middle. So if you need to go into your sound settings and adjust your microphone, you can do that uh, at this point before you proceed. So the next thing that you would do is click the start recording button and that will change to a stop recording button uh, when you're finished or when you get ready to stop. So once you're done recording, you'll see this and you have a couple of options. You can completely discard this video and start over. The other thing that you can do that I forgot to mention is you can play what you've recorded using this button right here, the play button, and you can see that I only recorded five seconds. You can cancel out, you can start over, or you can click the upload button. So from this point on, everything is going to look the same whether you're uploading or doing a screen recording. So once you click upload, the first thing that you're going to see is this screen and it's going to be uploading your video and you can just click in the title box and change your title to whatever you'd like it to be. It automatically takes the name of the file that you're uploading or it will take the timestamp of your webcam. So you can go ahead and change that title. If you don't change it now, you can come back to this screen later and change that if you'd like. You should also always put a description in. Even if you think you're not going to be using YouTube very much, you should definitely put a description in. For instance, if I were recording this for Earth's Natural Disasters, I would put um, Summer Session 2 2013 Weekly Transition Video for Week 3 or something like that. So some way that I know what this video is about without having to watch the whole thing. It's just an easy organization for me. You don't have to display that description, but it's a nice thing to do. And then the other thing is tags. Uh, depending on the purpose of your uploading of this video, you can put tags. It makes it easily searchable for other people and also will show up in their uh, suggested video results. Um, for a weekly transition video, this isn't necessary for sure, uh, but you can do that if you'd like. So you could tag it with uh, the name of your course or Moodle or something like that. Okay, so let's talk about privacy settings. This drop down will give you three different privacy setting options. The first one is public, and it shows right there what public means, which is anyone can search for your video and view your video. They don't have to be signed in, they don't have to have the link, it can simply show up in results when they search for something. The second option, which is the one that we recommend, is unlisted. This is uh, the privacy setting in which people have to have the link. They don't have to be signed in, but they simply have to have the link, but it's not going to show up in any search results. And then finally, the third one, which is the most restrictive, is the private setting. You actually have to assign someone's username, their YouTube username or email address, to your video for them to be able to watch it, which means they have to be signed in and they have to have the link both. That's the only possible way they can do it. We don't recommend that because it's pretty tedious to add all of your students um, email addresses to a particular video for them to be able to watch it. We recommend the unlisted so that you can simply link or embed within Moodle and then they can watch your video. This next piece here, if you have any of your social media uh, connected to YouTube, which you can see I have three different social media uh, connected there, you can uncheck these boxes so that when you save this or when you publish this video, you don't want it to go to social media necessarily. So uncheck all of those boxes so that it's not also being shared there. Basically what would happen is if you left one of these checked, 
it would show up in that social media and it would be you saying, hey, I've just shared a video and here's the link to it. So you can uncheck those. And then finally, the category. Uh, I always do education because all of my videos are connected somehow to education. Uh, and probably if you're doing this for a class, that would also be the case. Uh, now you can, the next part of this is the advanced setting and this is optional, but there may be some important things there that you want to see. So when you click the advanced settings tab, it's going to take you to the next part of your settings. This first part here is about comments and responses. You can uncheck those if you'd like. Basically if you uncheck those, no one can um, submit comments on your video and no one can vote on comments and no one can view ratings for the video. Next is the license and rights ownership. You can select a standard YouTube license which does have some restrictions as to how people can share that, whether or not they can download it, those kinds of things. That's all outlined in YouTube's terms of service and you can go there and read about that if you'd like. Caption certification, you don't have to worry about anything there. Uh, this is a video that you made, not something that was aired on television or something like that. So you don't have to worry about caption certification. And then these two down here, uh, you can leave these checked if you'd like. If you're going to embed this video on Moodle, you should leave the first one checked. Uh, if you have subscribers to your YouTube channel, this will notify them. Basically when they log into YouTube, it'll say, hey, um, one of your channels that you're subscribed to has uploaded a video. You can go look at it. So you have a location. Again, these things are optional. You can put in a location. You can click search and it will tell you where you're located by GPS coordinates. And then the recording date, if you click today, it will automatically put today's date in there. And 3D video, we don't need to worry about. And then finally, video statistics. If you want people to see how many times this has been watched or something like that, you can leave that checked. If not, you can uncheck it. And then finally, if it doesn't already say all changes are saved, you can click saved. Okay, so now what? Well, you want to go to the page where your video is, so it's telling you that your video is going to be live. Now by this point, it may not quite be live, but the page is already going to be there and you can do some settings if you would like. So once you click that, it takes you to this page. Now you're only seeing a partial page, obviously, a partial screenshot. Uh, but these things right here, you can click on any one of those uh, to be able to edit. If you want to go back and edit your description or anything that you've done, this pencil is the most important one. But for us, the main thing that we want to do with our video is we want to share it. So we're going to click the share tab right down here and it's going to open up now. So we've shifted down a little bit. Notice we've clicked the share tab and this gives us a link which we can email to students. We can simply post a URL link on Moodle or more importantly and somewhat more slick and seamless is if you click the embed button it will actually let you copy and paste a code that you can put into the HTML on Moodle and your video will play there rather than sending students to YouTube the video actually plays on the page. If you have questions about embedding and you need some technical help with that definitely contact the ORC. Most anyone here can help you with that. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is well, what if you come back to YouTube and you want to get back to the videos that you've uploaded? It's not real easy to find those, but if you look in the top of the page for the upload button, there's an arrow right next to that. And again, remember at the, remember at the beginning of the video, I said the upload button is on almost every page. So if you click that drop down, you'll get the video manager option, and this will take you to uh, your uploads. So notice here in the top it tells that I've uploaded 211 videos and here are the most recent ones. So I have some options here. The first thing that I can do is click the drop down right next to the edit button next to a video 
and I can click on any one of these options and it will take me to the page to edit those things. So if I want to edit the audio, if I want to do some enhancements, the info and the settings, what we just set up a few minutes ago, we can actually go and edit those directly from this page. The other option I'd like for you to look at there, right above the delete at the bottom of the list is the download MP4. If you have uploaded a video, you can go to YouTube and download it manually from your video manager. And then the other thing that I'll mention is you can see at a glance what your privacy settings are. This little unlocked button means that it's unlisted. So people can still see it, but they have to have the link. If it has little people there, then it's public. If the lock is locked, then it's private. And then also you can put a check mark next to one of your uh, videos or several of your videos if you'd like and do some bulk actions. And I'm talking about the actions button here at the top. So every, every one of these that I have clicked or that I have a check mark next to, whatever I click on this uh, menu, is it's gonna change that option. So I can delete them all, I can make them all public, I can make them all unlisted or private, I can change the license on all of those. So this is a nice way, if you have several videos that you, that you have uploaded and you wanna make them all unlisted or make them all public or something like that, you can do this um, to several different videos all at once. Okay, that about wraps it up. If you have any questions whatsoever, I would encourage you to contact the Southern Nazarene University Online Resource Center, and there's our phone number right there, 405-491-6682. Uh, that is our front desk, and the person who answers that phone can direct you to someone who can help you with your question. Or you can email online at snu.edu and we'll be sure that that request gets to the correct person. Thank you so much for all of your hard work with the SNU Online Resource Center. Have a great day.